Great. As mentioned, well, maybe not as mentioned, but as you saw, probably when you saw the uh, what the topics were today, we're talking about additives in manure, and I'm going to talk a little bit about nitrification inhibitors. One of the things I like to do is go back to the basics first, and I'm sure many of you are aware of some of these basics, so I'll just kind of briefly cover them. But in manure, we typically have two forms of nitrogen, and these are typically coming from the urine and the feces components. With our urine, we're going to have urea or uric acid. This is considered our fast nitrogen, and it quickly converts, even though it's an organic form, it quickly converts to ammonium or NH4. In our feces, we have what's considered more of our slow nitrogen, and it's basically released over a period of time. Some stuff is readily mineralized into ammonium. Some stuff takes a little bit longer, like the readily mineralized stuff we're talking about slowly releasing over the first year. Stuff that's a little more residual might take two, three years to release. So we have these two components. We have our organic nitrogen and we have our inorganic nitrogen. Inorganic is typically in the ammonium form. Now, what's interesting is that the how it's excreted and stored really dictates what the ammonium or inorganic nitrogen concentration is in manure. So here I have manure types and I split it out into solids and liquids. Liquids are at the top, solids are at the bottom. And then the different animal species. So swine, dairy, beef from the top to the bottom and then swine, dairy, beef and poultry from kind of the middle to the bottom there. Across the bottom x-axis, you see it's anywhere from 0 to 100% of nitrogen. The yellow portion on the right side of your screen shows you the organic nitrogen portion, and the red, which has the percentages also, shows you how much is in the ammonium or inorganic nitrogen form. So you can see that anything that's stored as a liquid or a slurry typically has a lot higher concentration of ammonium. Our dairy and beef are roughly 50-50, maybe slightly over. And our swine is actually more like 75% ammonium. All of this is important later when we're talking about inhibitors, but I want you to kind of know the difference between liquids and solids and also the dairy and swine in particular. With our swine manures, they have a lot lower concentration of ammonium, most of the nitrogens in the organic form. So let's talk about nitrogen cycling in soil a little bit. We know that plants take up ammonium and nitrate, but the animals are not giving us ammonium and nitrate. They're giving us ammonium and organic nitrogen. Now, as we saw, something like our cattle, our poultry tend to have a higher proportion in the organic nitrogen form, whereas something like swine tends to have it more in the ammonium nitrogen. So that's important because that means it's gonna move more or less quickly through this nitrogen cycle in the soil. So if we kind of zoom back out and give us a little more room here, we know that organic nitrogen goes through a process called mineralization and it takes a few years, but that will convert the organic nitrogen over to ammonium nitrogen. With ammonium nitrogen, we do worry about gaseous losses through volatilization. This is where the ammonium turns into ammonia gas and is lost to the atmosphere. The other way that ammonium transforms is into nitrate nitrogen, and that's through a process called nitrification. This is typically done by bacteria in the soil. And the one concern we have once things get to nitrate is that it can be lost in a couple different ways. It could be lost as a gas through the denitrification process. This is typically happening in saturated soils, soils that are very wet. The other process where we can lose nitrate is through leaching. And again, it's where water carries nitrate away deeper into the soil profile where the roots can no longer get it. So where does nitrification come into this? It comes into the nitrification process. Nitrification inhibitors are essentially working to disrupt the microbes in the soil that are causing this nitrification process to happen. So I'm going to talk about three research projects in the central United States. We have Wasika, Minnesota, and this is the one I'm more familiar with, so I'll give you a little more detail about it. We also have research in Boone, Iowa, and Arlington, Wisconsin. 
So we'll first start with the Minnesota research. That's where I am. I'm at the University of Minnesota. And this is done by some of my colleagues. Jeff Vetch was the primary researcher. They did their work from 2011 to 2014. And the whole goal was to see if swine manure application timing with and without nitropyrin, which is um, also known as instinct, that's the, the manufacturer's name for it, and see how that affects corn grain yield as well as the nitrogen availability in the soil. Now, this is an older product. Um, it's just instinct. I think there's a couple different versions out now, but this is one of the originals that was came onto the market. In this case, they're using finisher swine manure. They wanted to inject 120 pounds of available nitrogen, first year available nitrogen into the soil per acre. And they wanted to test application timing. So in this case, we're looking at before soil temperatures are uh, below 50 degrees and when soil temperatures are below 50 degrees. So they went with early October, which was immediately after soybean harvest. Soil temperatures were still warmer than that 50. And they also did early November when the soil temperatures had cooled. And then within each of those, they tested three rates of instinct, zero, so no instinct was added, or 35 ounces per acre, which is considered the full rate by the manufacturer. And then because we're scientists, we figured why not double it <laughs> just to see what happens. So 70 ounces per acre was considered the double rate. So first up, we wanna look at soil nitrogen. Is this in fact doing what it says it's gonna do? Is it preserving nitrogen? So what we see is soil nitrogen in pounds per acre from zero to 100. And then we split it up into ammonium, which is the first red bar, and nitrate, which is the second yellow bar. And then we have our different timings, none, full rate, and double rate. And we also have October and November in there as well. I'm gonna get on my little laser pointer here, so hopefully you can see in my mouse. Um, so what's interesting is if we look at the none, so this is a standard practice without any instinct in it, you can see that in October, there's a lot less overall nitrogen than in November. So just timing plays a pretty big role. And in October, you can see a lot more has even converted to nitrate. There's a higher concentration of nitrate than ammonium in the soil. In November, it's about equal. And then when we apply the full rate, you can see that in October, a lot more of that nitrogen stayed in the ammonium form. And if you add these two bars together, that's still more nitrogen than what we saw in October without the instinct. And November, it looks really good as well. So there's a lot more ammonium left in the soil than nitrate. There's still some nitrate, um, but again, this is good. And then with the double rate, it was very similar in November. We did see even more nitrogen preserved in October though as well. So this is the soil nitrogen going into the growing season. This is taken down to 12 inches of depth, and this is taken right before planting. So this is how much is going to be available to that crop going into the season. But overall, pretty good. We're seeing that it is, in fact, doing what it's supposed to be doing. And remember, this is averaged over four years of um, differing weather conditions. So overall, we're pretty, pretty pleased to see this. Next question always is though, well, how does that impact yield? Because that's great that we're preserving the nitrogen, but if it's not impacting yield, then maybe the cost isn't worth it. So here we have our yield in bushels per acre from zero up to 200. We have our two different months where the manure was applied, either October or November. And then we have our different application rates of the instinct. So none is the first red bar. Full rate is the middle bar that's blue and double rate is the yellow bar at the end of each grouping. In October, we see that there are different letters above these bars. If any of the bars have a, the same letter, it means it's not statistically different. Uh, so we see that in October, without any instinct, the yield was significantly lower than with instinct. And that didn't matter if it was a full or the double rate. So in that case, it does seem like instinct was in fact enhancing yield. Now, November, notice that all of these are the same. So statistically, there was not a difference in yield across these four years if it was applied in November with or without instinct. So that's really interesting. Basically, what this is showing us is that 
In this case, if you're using instinct or um, some other nitrification inhibitor in October, you know, a few weeks before your soil temperatures get cool, this might be worth it. Um, we don't have the economic analyses uh, in this presentation about this, but obviously any increase in yield would have to offset the cost of applying the instinct. So in this case, this is more likely to happen if you're using it in October. If you're using it in November though, when soil temperatures are already cool, you know, maybe you're not getting the bang for your buck then because maybe the cost of the nitrification inhibitor was not worth the very minute um, increase in yield that was seen. So that's kind of what we saw in Minnesota. Now in Iowa, uh, this very same research project pretty much was carried out. Uh, Dr. John Sawyer and Aaron Sassman worked on this. They did it from 2010 to 2013. Uh, very similar to the setup that we saw in Minnesota, except for manure was culture injected instead of with sweeps, but either way it was injected. And I'm just going to show you the yield results here. And they saw, found pretty much the same thing that we found. Um, there were no statistical differences in October or November, but they did see a pretty similar trend in that yield tended to be higher where instinct was applied in October compared to where it was not applied. But in November, the yields were all actually very, very similar. So overall, it's looking good for swine manure in certain circumstances, at least both in Iowa and in Minnesota. But Wisconsin wanted to try it out, and Drs. Carrie Lebowski and Tom Andreski worked on this. They did kind of a preliminary test in 2011 where they broadcast dairy manure at one site and just looked at with and without instinct and then fall versus spring application. What's interesting here is that grain yield versus silage yield differed. Uh, for corn grain yield, you see here no instinct and then fall of 2010 application versus spring of 2011 application versus with instinct. Uh, there's no statistical difference here. I know it looks a little bit like instinct may have increased the yield, but there's a lot of variability across this field. So they didn't weren't able to detect this statistically for a difference at least. But corn silage yield, they did find a statistical difference. And they found that with instinct, regardless of whether it is applied in the fall or spring, increased silage yield. And this is interesting um, because what it seems like, this is the same field. What they did is they actually harvested the um, silage corn and then they like just took the grain off of it to see what the grain yield would have been had they let this go for grain yield. So this is pretty interesting just for that reason that there was more silage, but not necessarily grain when they're using instinct. So it seems like that extra N in this particular case was allowing the corn to put on more biomass, but not necessarily more grain. So anyways, it's just kind of a interesting uh, effect that they found. But they went to expand the study and they looked at three different sites and did it over three different growing seasons. And they moved to injecting the dairy manure rather than broadcasting it because we think that something like a nitrification inhibitor is going to be more robust when it's like closer to the manure rather than spread out over the soil because then it's working on soil and manure as well. So again, they did early, well, they did early fall and late fall, and then they did the spring as well, and they did with and without instinct. Now this graphic is a little complicated, so I apologize, but here we have grain yield. We have early fall, late fall, and spring for each year at each station. And then in each group of bars, the dark blue or the first bar is no manure. The second bar or the middle one is without instinct. So manure without instinct. And the third bar, the orange one is with instinct. Um, and then if you see a star or an asterisk in the bar, that means it was statistically different than the other thing that was barred or the other thing that had an asterisk. Um, so you can see that over all of these site years, they actually really didn't have many statistical differences at all. The only time they saw a difference was for late fall application in 2012 at Waterloo or for early fall application in 2013 at Waterloo. Um, so again, like at Sun Prairie, Arlington, they didn't see any statistical differences. And in fact, sometimes without instinct and did better than with instinct and other times instinct did better than without. So it's really just inconsistent. 
So take home messages with swine manure, instinct reduced the nitrification in the soil, but it only improved yields when applied in October. Delaying application to November, even without the instinct, still had equivalent yields to October applications with instinct. So you really need to think about kind of the economics and how they work out for you and your situation and when you need to apply on your farm. For dairy manure, you know, sometimes it worked, other times it didn't. So is can that justify the cost if it's kind of a up in the air shot, whether it's going to even work? So they're not recommending it for dairy manure in their state at the time. And I think some of this has to do with the fact that swine manure just has so much more ammonium and dairy manure has a lot more organic nitrogen when it's being applied. So maybe the nitrification inhibitors aren't working as well. So that is my slide. Here's my contact info. 